Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Now don't forget to like and sub and leave your comments after this video has finished and don't forget to press the bell for notifications. Okay guys, this video in the light of things just lately when pregnant women and pregnant women who fake their pregnancy for all kinds of reasons all kinds of reasons and most extreme fake pregnancies now this woman she killed her dog her husband loved this dog of eight months old a chihuahua now this wife was a desperate wife <clears throat> who claimed gang stole the baby from her womb so these few cases have been in the news and there is many many women who fake their pregnancy armed with a knife Anita Parker now she butchered and this bowed her husband's chihuahua puppy and then she got into bed and waited for him to return home. When he came home, the scene was something like out of a horror movie. Disgusting, blood everywhere. She sat on their bed and she surrounded herself by blood and body tissue and screaming about having a miscarriage her husband Johnny listened and in devastation had his 43 year old wife and listened to what she told him that she had lost their child the little boy he'd seen in the ultrasound scans and had been so looking forward to meet him she claimed she flushed their son's fetus down the toilet very disturbing Johnny, her husband, would later discover that she hadn't lost a child at all. In fact, she had never been pregnant and had used his beloved pet's mutilated body to stage the miscarriage. The case is among a lot of tragic tragic scenarios where women pretend to be pregnant and this is at the cost of often leaving their loved ones upset and grieving for a baby who never was you know who did this one time Justin Beaver stage a fake pregnancy and posted it and announced it April Fool's Day but you know what many people did not find that one bit funny it's shameful and this disrespectful and of course to millions of women out there 
that go through miscarriages, stillbirths, and are infertile and they can't get pregnant for whatever reason. And he does a sick joke like that. It might at first be humor, but people out there that cannot have babies is torture. So, of course the husband is very upset that she's had this mi miscarriage and there's a picture up here the 40 she's 43 years old and she's from Alabama and she had faked this pregnancy for seven months before she staged the miscarriage and she shared her ultrasound photo online saying it's a boy it's a boy of course it's a fake ultrasound she just got it from somebody put a picture up easy done but her lies turned deadly when she killed the dog, the innocent puppy. So she did kill a human. You know, not a, a dog is like a human. And she killed this puppy for, to stage a miscarriage. The lengths people will go to. And this little puppy was called Dolly. Now, this comes a bit more bizarre because she called 911. And this is in May 2016. She calls 911 to report a pregnancy related emergency. First responders discovered her soaked in blood and raised her to the hospital. But medics shockingly found out that the woman had never been pregnant and the blood belonged to this little puppy. She had told Johnny, her husband, she flushed the fetus down the toilet and dumped Dolly's chopped up body in the trash. And her husband later found the corpse. Of course, they're not together anymore. She was charged later with a felony of animal cruelty. Now, the reason for her fake pregnancy doesn't look very clear, but her fake pregnancy got a dog killed, mutilated, little Dolly. And that is clearly cruel, uncaring. Now her, I don't know what her husband thought about her, but obviously this took a toll on their marriage and a woman who is able to inflict such cruelty on her dog for her own ends is probably capable of other uncaring acts 
and her husband. Might be wise to just stay the hell away from her. Another case of a fake pregnancy. And this woman, this faker, is from, she's Colombian. She's Colombian. And she pretended gangsters cut out her baby. Yes, guys. They gave her a C-section. Gangster way. She even went as far as to claim the gang had cut the unborn baby from her womb. Oh my goodness. Okay, she's 37 years old. And she had used a cushion to fool her husband into believing she was expecting a baby in a bid to convince him not to leave her. But this scam unraveled. And it unraveled on the day her child was due to be delivered by C-section. Hmm. She claimed she had been heading to the local hospital when she was kidnapped by a gang in a red van who bundled her inside and drugged her. Drugged her. Bundled her inside and drugged her. After awakening from her ordeal, she told her husband and other loved ones that the organ trafficking gangsters had cut the child from her belly to sell its body parts. But you know, medical staff weren't gonna have none of that. They found no evidence of knife wounds consistent with a backstreet cesarean. And blood tests showed the woman had never even been pregnant. The reason for her fake pregnancy is the very most common one to convince her partner not to leave her. So they probably had a lot of problems. And she's another one that's a little out there and will go to any lengths to keep her man. Another fake pregnancy that ended up deadly. A woman who shot dead a brand new mama and stole her baby. Well, this lady who faked her pregnancy had lost her own child. She had lost a child before staging her pregnancy. Now this lady is 36 years old and she's from Texas. Pretended she was, she had lost her baby but carried on pretending she was still expecting even holding a baby shower for her upcoming arrival with her family and friends. See, she lost her baby, but she didn't tell anybody. And she carried on like she was still pregnant. Why didn't she, she just didn't want to tell anybody she wasn't pregnant anymore. Like she was a failure, I guess, or something. I don't know what was going through her head. Maybe she had a complete breakdown after this. But she carried on 
and this happened in November 2016. She drove to Wichita, Kansas, after finding out a former colleague, a former friend that she worked with, Laura, had given birth to a baby girl. She shot dead this new mom before kidnapping her six-day-old girl, Sophia Gonzalez. She took the child back to Texas, intending to raise her as her own. But this little girl, Sophia, was found safe less than two days later. Later, at the woman's home, she shot dead and kidnapped her baby. The father discovered her missing and Laura dead when he got home. Now this woman was convicted of first degree premeditated and intentional murder in Texas. Kidnapping and interference with parental custody and she was sentenced to 50 years. Now, in this fake pregnancy, the woman faked her pregnancy after she lost her own child. But it would be almost un standable as a desperate act to replace her lost child. So she was devastated and then she came up with a plan to replace the baby she'd lost. Instead of coming clean and telling people I've had a miscarriage she'd rather lie but of course she is sick as well and needed help but this is just an example of how emotional trauma can lead some people to extreme terrible acts Another faker, another woman who faked her pregnancy. Now this mom of four who claimed her twins had died. Now this lady's got four kids already. Her name is Leslie. And she tricked her loved ones into believing she was pregnant with twins, then faked the pair's death in childbirth, leaving her family grief-stricken. Now this happened in November again. All these Novembers keep coming up, they keep popping up lately. And this was a 2008 case. Leslie called her relatives from her local hospital in Georgia and told them the twins she had been carrying for five months had been stillborn. She described how the infants had taken one breath each before dying. The mom of four claimed they had been cremated and days later, an emotional funeral 
was held. However, devastated loved ones would later find out the twins never existed. Leslie was caught out when speaking about the babies during an interview with Child Protective Services about her stepson, leading officials to investigate the stillborns. They found no record of the twins' deaths at the hospital. But the lead investigator in this case said Leslie's actions were the result of two medical conditions, Munchausen syndrome and Munchausen by proxy. These conditions see sufferers make up illness, illnesses for themselves or their kids in order to obtain sympathy from others. And she was jailed for eight years but she didn't kill nobody. She didn't kill nobody. She made, up, she made up an elaborate story and got people to feel sorry for her. She got the attention on her for whatever reason. And she got eight years for that. And this case turned out to be a case of Munchausen syndrome and inflicted and she inflicted her syndrome on her husband and children so it's reasonable to conclude she faked her pre pregnancy for the same reasons so that's why she was jailed for eight years. Another faker, another faked pregnancy. And this was on a talk show, on the Jeremy Call show, you know. But anyway, you know, he has all kinds of guests on his show. He had a guest on called Lizzie. She confessed on live air that she lied about her pregnancy to trap her ex. The tearful woman left fans gobsmacked as she admitted to faking the pregnancy to try win back her former boyfriend, Kenny. She had initially told uh, Jer Jeremy she was 24 weeks pregnant and wanted Kenny back. However, you know, Kenny's not having none of that. He's not having it. He's not having it. He didn't want nothing else to do with her. And and told the host that she was lying about the baby and had even faked her scan. Yeah, he's a wise man. He's a wise man. She can't fool him. As, as they argued and their families become involved, Lisa stormed backstage. And Jeremy gently told her, an expert has said her maternity notes do not stack up and has her to tell the truth. Tell the truth, Lizzie, initially stuck by her guns, but ended up breaking down and telling the host that she lost the baby two days before appearing on the show. So she admitted that she faked it, but only it only just happened. I lost the baby two days ago. Well, she's still lying, but she didn't want to make herself look bad. She Then she still wanted sympathy, didn't she? Because she still stuck to her guns. Said she was pregnant and lost it. And Kenny later asked his ex, why lie? And why get your mom to lie? Why get your mom to lie? She brought the mother in on it too. He added, there's women out there who can't have kids. Why you do that? See, he's a man. He's 
you know, he's a smart man. He knows what it's about. He understands, you know, women can't have kids and then you fake it. Why? And the reason for her faking a pregnancy is another most common reason to keep her man from leaving her. And another woman who faked her pregnancy, Angela, Angela Smith. And she is from Dunn, North Carolina. And she, have, she said to have fake doctor's appointments and thrown a gender reveal party as she pretended to be pregnant. But her scam was revealed the day before she was meant to give birth. See these women that fake their pregnancy. They go all the way or halfway through they have a miscarriage or they have a miscarriage a day before when they get caught they say I just had a miscarriage the other day you know but some take it on the nine months and they are the ones that are the most dangerous because the baby has to be born what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You've gone too far now. What are you gonna do? Well, her scam was up because she was supposed to give birth to this baby. Now revenge against someone leaving a relationship rarely brings satisfaction. After being questioned, she admitted to faking her pregnancy and said she did it to hurt her ex. So that's why she faked her pregnancy faking a pregnancy rage of motives this can include Get in time off work, you know, you go on maternity leave. You get some free time off with pay. You pleasing, you're a pleaser, you're pleasing. But it won't last for very long. It only lasts for a while. You know, these people that for whatever reason, fake pregnancies. There's all kinds of reasons why they do it. They get attention. They have people helping them, being nice to them, maybe giving up their seat for them on a, on a train or something. They are getting help the spotlight is on them. They are being cared for and they like it. Oh yeah, they like it and it's like a high. It's like a drug. And, but you have to come down. You will have to come down off that high sooner than later. And the man in a woman's life and convincing others to relieve pressure 
on ourselves at work or just desperately wanting a baby. Now, you have to be desperate to go to the lengths that end in murder. Your needs, your high, outweigh the punishment that you will get when you get caught. They desperately want to love something that don't love you back. And they fake pregnancies to get attention of a person that don't want to be with them anymore. But they can't let go. And they're going to trap them at the cost of another human life. And... They're, like I said, they try to please others because in their mind they can't do nothing right but getting pregnant that would be something they could do right and they want to make a good job of it um, and if they see how happy they are the more, the more they're going to go forward and they're going to have to find a baby at the end of the day and this is a deadly game and like the motives are self-seeking even if they are often driven by emotional needs and since other people are almost always hurt or disappointed, faking pregnancies is generally a selfish, inconsiderate act. Now, there's been a few cases in the news lately, like last year, and we try to warn people not to go answer ads on Craigslist or, or even Facebook. People selling baby clothes, baby furniture. We're not saying everybody's not legit. You just don't know who's legit because people fake. And you can be the nicest person on earth, but inside, evil lurks. You don't know what kind of emotions this person is going through. You don't know if they're unstable. They have a game, and they're going to get what they want. And they don't care who you are. They're going to take what they need. So these murders, these pregnant women have been killed for their babies. They've been lured into the home on false pretenses. Because they said they were selling, selling baby stuff and you went to the home without anybody with you you can't do that anymore you can't trust people anymore you can trust people you can lead them to believe you trust them 
but don't ever, ever go to their home alone. And you certainly tell people where you're going. You leave a little note. You leave a few notes. You leave a note in your car. Because you never know. You may never come back home. Now, first off, just don't go there by yourself. Don't go there. Don't take that chance. It's just not worth it. And number one, you cannot be so trusting. There's a lot of people out there that are gullible and they believe anything anybody says because they're so nice and sweet. They're so nice and sweet. But they are people readers. They can see you coming from a mile away. They can manipulate you because they're they're nothing but fraud. They are fake people themselves. So, this has happened a few times where mothers have been killed for their babies. They have been drugged. They have had, um, you know, stuff put in their drink. They have been strangled. Um, and then their baby cut out the womb. They have stolen their babies. It's happening all the time. We've got, kind of got to speak up. If you see something, if you hear something, you've got to say something. Because when things look odd, when you question something, something's not right, that's your instinct telling you when you first go with your instinct. But you too have to be a people reader. Uh, when you say to yourself, my God, I just don't believe a word that person says. But, you know, when these people fake their pregnancy, and just like Heidi, you know, the case that's going on now is, you know, Heidi had her baby, and she was there, the alleged murderer, kidnapper, you name it, was at the birth. She was there every step of the way. She was right there. You know when they say, your enemies, keep your enemies close. Well, she was right there every step of the way because she wanted to know every little detail. And she wanted to know everything about this baby when it was born. She was the f one that wanted to see this baby first. That's why she was in the delivery room. Because she watched this baby being born. She wanted to be the first one to set eyes on this baby. That's what I think. She wanted the experience of what it's like to give birth. But you know, she's not going to give birth herself. Oh, no, no, no. But she wants to experience it. Because she has to tell people. She has to know how it felt. What you go through. And she's experienced it. She wants that high. And of course she wants to know what time it was born, how much it weighed. Um, she wants pictures taken with the baby. Yes, yeah, she wants pictures taken with the baby. Because later on, you see, they say, you got any pictures of you with the, uh, in the hospital? And she'll come up with those pictures. Yes, this was my baby when it was first born. Oh yeah. She had it planned. 
She had it planned, premeditated, all the way. And then she tried to blame, but she tried to make Shane look really bad about their relationship um, and stuff like that with the drinking and the abusing and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But she's not the only one that said it. But she was trying to get the focus off her. Plus, they say a person that has committed a crime, they say nine times out of ten, is somebody close to you. Somebody close to you. It's not a stranger. And she was staying very close to the family and friends. She wanted to know everything that was going on. She was calling people every three hours, whatever, all the time, constantly calling, constantly um, asking if they needed her help. And she was watching everything. And she was scared stiff to even move out of that house. She was ordering stuff. Ordering baby food, baby milk, diapers. She couldn't go nowhere. Because she had a dead body in her car. What is she going to do with her? I don't know. I don't know what she was going to do with her. But just a little recap on her. Um, her charges have not been upgraded yet. And within a day or two, um, they may up upgrade the charges. But they're in no rush to upgrade these charges. Because they don't want to rush to judgment. They don't want to charge her with something. And then later on want to up the charges. They want to be able to charge her with the max, with the max. And the max is capital murder. Capital murder. Um, and of course, life in prison without parole. And she's going to be facing one of those two later on. Um... They have got the surveillance videos from various places and they, a cup of coffee is coming into play now, a drink, a drink is coming into play and it looks like, like I said, she was drugged, no she's drugged to make it easy for her to control her. Now, these drugs that she could have used, there's a various drugs you can use to make somebody weak and pass out. That's all you need them to be, is weak, very weak, and pass out. And then you've got them. You've got them. Now there's um, a, a date rape drug that will work just like that. That can make you pass out. You don't know what's going. It can make you look drunk. It can make you, like they say, wobble you know, like you're drunk, and you, you kind of know something's going on, but you can't remember a damn thing, but it's just to get you to pass out, or make you very weak, that's all you need, and you won't have that person struggle, because they can't, they can't struggle. Sometimes they they can't move. 
and there's another drug ketamine 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 if used in a high dosage it can cause death it can even cause death but it does make breathing very difficult and that does not take long to take effect and there's something else you can use and it might give you a heart attack and it might kill you it'll make you weak and you won't be able to fight back it could make you sick it could make you vomit and it's cheap if you use something like Visine. Not saying she did, but I'm just saying nasal eye drops, even. If you don't take the nasal and eye drops properly, as prescribed, up your nose, in your eyes, if you digest it, it can be fatal. It can make your heart stop. It can kill you. Now, there's chloroform. There's also chloroform. Now, if you wanna, like, drug somebody, where they're, they gotta be able to drink it. They've gotta be able to drink enough of it to have an effect without tasting it. You can also use chloroform, like I said. You can use chloroform. That'll knock you out. All you need is a knockout drug. That's all I'm saying. You just need a knockout drug. And you don't have to fight with this person. You don't have to struggle. And they are at your mercy. If you get on the juggler in the neck, you can make somebody pass out just like that. One, two, three. That's all you need to do. And then you do the rest. You strangle them, because nobody's fighting back. Nobody's fighting back. But this is just scenarios. This is just, it, it, that's how it could have happened. How did it happen? Did she fight back? We don't know if she fought back yet. We don't know if she's got any skin under her nails. Does she have any hair from pulling on the hair they will be able to tell if she did fight back but you know if she had a knockout drug a knockout drug there's just no way that she would have been able to save her own life save her baby's life now this baby is very lucky to be alive because if she'd stayed in that home any longer, I fear that who knows what she would have done. She would have lost it. Oh yes, she would have. But she wouldn't have been able to, she couldn't stand the pressure. She's all, she's freaking out. She's unpredictable. And Thank God, you know, people called, left their tips, and plus the police see the surveillance, and 
we know that we're not going to see it. They're making a case. But they're giving us little bits here, little bits there. Um, but we knew, you know, all of us, that there had to be surveillance. There's got to be surveillance. Everybody's got phones. That's why I said in my last video, anybody around that area that was driving around that area, you know, where Heidi lived, where she dropped the kid off at school, all the way to Megan's home, 150 odd miles away. That's a two hour drive or so away. Anywhere along that route, people's using their cameras. You could have picked up something that you don't even know. It was nothing to you, but now it can be used in evidence. You need to look at any kind of video. If you were along that route, you might have picked up something. Even if it's her car going by, it doesn't matter just a car going by. You might have seen her stop at the lay-by, the rest stops to go to the bathroom. You could have seen that car stop. You could have seen her walking into the toilet. You could have seen this car turning off down a, a dirt road, coming out of a dirt road because she certainly didn't have Heidi alive in that two hour drive. Because what if she'd come, what if she'd come back and she, you know, she woke up. Is she gonna fight her? She's gonna fight her in the car? She wasn't gonna take that chance. So, I mean, this place was a busy place. But anyway, guys, please listen to your instinct and don't, if you're pregnant, if, you're, if you know somebody that's pregnant, um, they could be faking it. How are you going to know? But don't believe everything you hear. The proof is in the pudding. Um, you just gotta see the signs. Watch out for, you know, their change in their mood swings. They're, they're, they've got depressed. Um, they're not acting right. You know, one minute the stomach's this big, another day the stomach's that big. You know, feel the baby. Feel the baby. See, can I? Can I feel the baby? You know, do something that would make them react. Because, you know, they're not going to want you to feel that your, their stomach. Because they're in fear that you'll find out. That there's not even a baby in there. It's sad to say, but it's come to that. Now, most people that are real, that are real, that have a baby for real, they're not faking it, go to the hospital or have a home birth. Even if they gave birth at home, they will get seen by a doctor and go to the hospital to get checked out. You would have evidence. You would have pictures. You would have photos. You'd be calling people. You'd be You'd have these photos. You would text your friend the photo. You, you know, you'd be doing all kinds of things. Hey, I just had my baby. Here's the baby. You know, like you do. If somebody doesn't do that, they got something to hide. And like Heidi's friends said, they never saw a baby. They never went to see a baby in a hospital. 
they never had a picture of the baby. Well, no, because Megan can't put that picture out. This picture's hot. This baby's hot. She is scorching hot. She wasn't going to send anybody a picture of her baby. The, um, the, they had a vigil tonight for Heidi and remembering her as what a good mother she was, a good singer. She had some good friends, co-workers remembering her and remembering her joy when her baby was born, her little baby girl. And they're not going to, s to see their mother again. And at the vigil, the grandfather said that the baby's coming home tonight. The baby is coming home. They're doing the fine, you know, finalizing it, and she's coming home. And it's great that the baby is going to be with family, where she belongs, with family, and to see her brother. Bittersweet. But if anything came out of this, like they said, one life is saved, but they're sorry they couldn't save the, the other life, which is Heidi. They were too late to save her life. But she's looking down and smiling because she knows her baby's safe now. Her baby is safe. 